to trust God. I may want to trust God, but it's obvious that I'm struggling with it. Now, the psalmist David did say, what time I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. So there are times when you can not feel so great about something, and you can still say, well, God, this is how I feel, but I'm going to put my trust in you anyway, because trust in God is a decision. It's not a feeling that we wait to have. And you can, you're going you're to put your trust in something. If it's not God, then it's going to be yourself. It's going to be your friends, the government, the world, your bank account, your employer. And all those things are shaky and very unstable. But God is not. He is the one thing that is never shaken. That's why the Bible refers to him as the rock. He's a rock that cannot be moved. It's important to maintain a peaceful heart. Something that God speaks to me really often, and I need to hear it often, is stay relaxed in your soul. <laughs> Even like our physical body. You know, you could, right now, you could say, come on, let's just try it. Like, See, I don't know, maybe because you're here in the studio and you know you're likely to get on TV, you may, you know. And I could be the same way here because I'm, I'm preaching and this has got to be good and I got to pull it off and I got timing and everything is just like, so I could be like. And that is our temptation. But really, we can choose to relax. And I have found for me, I really need God's anointing which is his presence and power in my life. The more we have of God's anointing, the easier everything is going to be and the more we're going to be able to enjoy it and the greater God can use us. So let's just say, for example, like whether it's what I'm doing today or if I'm doing a big conference somewhere, if I get all tense, God is not going to be able to flow through me like he could if I stayed relaxed. Because staying relaxed proves that we're trusting God to do what needs to be done rather than us trying to make it happen. I think as soon as we start trying to make something happen, we just tense up all over the place. And so it's important to learn how to relax, breathe, relax in your soul, relax in your body, and guard your heart. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're not going to have a fight on your hands. Because the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy that we are to fight the good fight of faith. And what that means is we have an enemy, Satan. He's going to come against us. The enemy roams about like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking whom he may seize upon and devour. And we're to resist him steadfast in faith. He's always going to try to get us upset about something. But listen to this. Everything that the enemy tries to do to us Jesus has given us an antidote for that. So it's like Satan wants to poison our minds and poison our souls, but everything that comes against us, there's an answer in the Word of God for that. And so there's in the world, you will have tribulation. It's a promise. There's no point in praying you'll never have trouble because I can tell you that is a prayer that will not get answered. You can pray that God will help you navigate your trouble, that he'll give you wisdom in your trouble, that he'll guide you, that he'll show you what to do, but it's useless to pray that you'll never have any. And it doesn't matter how spiritual you become. Matter of fact, I might even just say that the more spiritual you become, the more you grow in God, the more the enemy is going to try to come against you to stop you. Because you have to understand, if there's anything Satan despises, it's progress. Any kind of progress in our life, he's going to come against us. The thief only comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life. Well, we can't enjoy our life if we're worried all the time and stressed out. So you have to guard your heart, and that means you have to pay attention to what you're thinking. <laughs> One of my biggest problems in life was I never thought about what I was thinking. And so for years and years and years, I mean, even something like the next time you feel depressed, are discouraged don't just talk about how you feel but stop for a moment and ask yourself what have I been thinking <laughs> and 
And I can promise you that you cannot get discouraged without thinking thoughts that don't line up with the Word of God. You can maybe maybe you're just under pressure and you ask you kind of think, well, what's been in my mind? Well, maybe you're worrying too much about a mistake you made yesterday that now only God can fix. And so there's no point in being stressed out over something that you did that you can't undo. Even like, you know, my past and all the abuse that I went through and other people have gone through a lot of things like that. You know, we can spend our whole life wishing that wouldn't have happened. But the truth is, is you can't wish it away. It already did happen. You can't do anything about that now. But what you can do is learn from it. And you can be determined that you're still going to have a good life. But you will have to be careful about your thoughts. As a man thinks in his heart, so does he become. And... I think I said this in, a, in another show, but I believe that the enemy, I don't know if it's because we're not fully awake early in the morning or, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that has this problem, but I have to be really careful about my thoughts when I first get up because it's almost like there, there's, a, there's a, a little bidding war going on for who's going to have you for the day. And I think especially when you first wake up, you're a little tired, you're not fully awake, you got the whole day in front of you and maybe a lot of things you're not really looking that forward to. And, and you know, if, if you've got a few years on you, your body maybe is not wanting to co cooperate with you so well. A few things are stiff. You don't feel real good just yet. And so, especially early in the morning, I want to encourage you to guard your heart. The Bible says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance or diligence and above all that you guard. So we are to guard what we let into us more than anything else in our life. If our physical heart is unhealthy, it affects many other areas of our body and life. And if our spiritual heart is unhealthy, it also affects pretty much every other area in your life. Now, one of my favorite scriptures is from John chapter 14. Also, you know, we started with John 14, 1. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. But then Jesus continues this point, and in John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. See, there's a type of peace that you can have if you function on the world system where if everything is going the way you want it to, there's nothing to worry about. You're good. But he wants to give us a peace that functions in the middle of the storm. Amen? And, I mean, that's your inherited right. He said, this is what I bequeath to you. This is what I give to you. As a child of God, you have a right that's been purchased by the blood of Jesus to calm down, not have to worry, not have to try to figure everything out, no matter what is going on in your life. And I tell people frequently, and I think this is good to hear, when you have a problem, it's okay for you to go ahead and enjoy your life. I'm going to say that again. When you have a problem, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> See, for some reason, we think it just wouldn't be right. I mean, if you if you got a kid that's in trouble, you can't enjoy the day. You got to worry. You got to figure it out. You got to, you know, my goodness, if you've got a financial problem, you got to try to figure this out. I remember in our younger years when I first started studying the word my husband of course is not a worrier he's calm about everything and uh, it actually would make me mad because when you're upset you want somebody to be upset with you and um, so it seemed like every month we didn't have enough money to pay the bills and I would be with the calculator and the bills and you know I'd figure it all out and sure enough we were short and then I'd figure it all out again and sure enough we were short I don't know why we think if we count it again and again <laughs> That something may change, but it's just more to just keep irritating us. And I can remember Dave would be playing with the kids and watching TV, and I would get so mad. It's like, you need to come out here and do something. I remember saying, you need to do something. He said, what do you want me to do? We tithe. We give. We're obedient to God to the best of our ability. We're doing the best we can. God will take care of it. And you know what? How many things have you worried about in the past <laughs> that now you look back 
and God took care of it. And all of your worry and all your stress certainly didn't do any good, but it did do harm. Because all it does is hurt you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. Don't let your hearts be troubled. This is what I want you to see. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And don't permit yourselves to be fearful, cowardly, and intimidated. So wow, I'm getting four big instructions here right in a row. Don't let yourself. Stop allowing yourself. Don't permit yourself. Now, we can't do it on our own. I mean, I can tell you there's nothing that we can do simply by willpower alone. However, we do need to use our will. God has given us a free will, and it's up to us if we decide to worry or to trust God. And I do believe the longer that you're in a relationship with God, the more experience you have with God, the more you see him bring deliverance into your life, the easier it becomes to not worry. It is more challenging for a young believer, especially one that has a lot of problems, because you're just learning about God. But boy, when you know God, when you know God, there's a difference in learning about God and knowing God. No wonder the Apostle Paul prayed, my determined purpose is to know him and the power of his resurrection that lifts me out from among the dead even while I'm in the body. So Paul, this great apostle who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, He's writing to the Philippians and he's saying, this is more important to me than anything else, to know him and to know that no matter what's going on in my life, he will deliver me from it. I was looking this morning at Proverbs and this is such a great scripture. Proverbs 14, 30. A calm and an undisturbed mind and heart is the life and health of the body. Wow. You know, my husband is so healthy. And always feels good. But he also never worries. He's never upset. He's never frustrated about anything. And I even asked him a couple weeks ago. I'm still having a little trouble not being annoyed about it. But I asked him a couple of weeks ago. I said, do you ever have a bad thought about anybody? He said, no, not really. <laughs> and I'm like, God, could I just get a personality transplant here? Could you just maybe like... Could you take a little bit of Dave and give it to me and give him a little bit of me so we're, you know, we're not just on polar opposite ends of the personality scale? And I do believe it's one of the reasons why he feels so good all the time. Now, I'm not saying that everybody that has a health problem, it's because you worry or because you think bad thoughts about people. But we do know that a lot of health issues are created by stress. I mean, that's a known medical fact. And nothing puts more stress on us than thinking bad thoughts and worrying all the time. Can anybody agree with that? All right. So don't let yourselves be troubled. And I think, you know, when you, I've kind of found out when, the Bible says resist the devil at his onset. In 1 Peter 5, 8, that's the amplified translation. Resist the devil at his onset. And I like that because I think the longer you put up with something, the harder it is to get rid of it. If the moment you start to be worried or concerned, you would say, nope, <laughs> that's not God's plan for me. It's not going to do me any good. I cast my care on you. The dictionary online defines worry as to give way to anxiety or unease, to allow your mind to dwell on difficulties or troubles.
Swear I won't forget this. Why do I regret this? In my mind, reckless thoughts are feeling endless. Sitting up, I'm breathless. Anxiety's infectious. I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed. I hate being open. I hate being broken. I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion. Anger ain't a potion. Rub it on like lotion. I can feel it soaking, reopen. The scars have awoken. I can't move on till I let go. I feel so lost, never at home. Need to be strong, every breath hold. 'Cause I can't move on till I let go. I can't move on till I let go. I feel so lost, never at home. Need to be strong, every breath hold. 'Cause I can't move on till I let go.
I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go troubles to brood over or to overthink an issue and I love this worry also means to torment yourself <laughs> so really worry does no good I'm, I'm going to end the day with a list of what it does and what it doesn't do but I can tell you none of it's good it doesn't do you any good and the devil just laughs he loves it because you, you're tormenting yourself he doesn't even have to bother you because you're doing it yourself guard your heart don't let upsetting feelings and thoughts get into your heart and if they do get in the moment that you recognize them cast down those wrong thoughts one of the, one of the ways to not worry is when you're having a problem and fear comes is to purposely think about something that God has done for you in the past some other problem you had that now you've been delivered from and even if you have an opportunity talk to somebody about that you know one of the things we do is we talk about our problems and talk about them and talk about them and talk about them and everybody we see for five minutes we want to tell them everything that's wrong and everything that's going on in our life well I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing with a friend and asking them to pray we all want empathy we want people to know what we're going through but how about following that up at least with but you know I remember I remember a time I mean when I think about everything that God has delivered me from and you know it's helpful to me I mean I I, I told Dave the other day I said you know what ultimately everything does work out you know you don't exactly know what you're gonna have to go through to get to the working out part but it does ultimately work out if you want God's help with your problems, here's the way to get it. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7. Therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. Now, here's the simplicity of what I think that means. Don't even begin to think that you can solve your own problem. <laughs> humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he might exalt you. If I were you at least 10 times a day, I would tell God, I know that I'm nothing without you. And I cannot do anything worth doing without you. I love to quote what Paul said in Romans. In me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. The only good thing in us is Christ in us, the hope of glory. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And then verse 7 tells us how to do that. Casting all of your care, all your worries, all your concerns once and for all on him for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully I like to say sometimes either I'm going to take care of it or God's going to take care of it but we're not going to both do it at the same time right. many times I think God just has to kind of back off we think where are you God where you know we he just has to back off and say let me know when you're done <laughs> yeah. whenever you're finished with all your plans and all your ideas let me know when you're done, and then I'll go to work. Amen? Oh, but we're so afraid if we don't help God. <laughs> I mean, don't you just know that God needs your help? 
I have even caught myself making suggestions to God of what he might do. <laughs> you ever done that? Well, Lord, you could. Or you might think about. It's a good thing God loves us unconditionally. Psalm 55, 22. Cast your burdens on the Lord, releasing the weight of them, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, to fall, or to fail. He will never allow those that are his children to fail. Questions to think about, or quotes to think about, rather. I love these quotes. Don't fear for the future. God is already there. <laughs> Billy Graham said, I've read the last page of the Bible and everything works out good in the end. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, I guess the bottom line is if you just want to think, you know, I'm just going to have problems all my life and I don't know if they'll ever go away. The good news is, is someday you're going to be in heaven and you're going to live with him for eternity. So we'd all like for all of our problems to go away. But, you know, if they don't, we've still got a pretty good future looking at us. Stop worrying about what can go wrong and get excited about what can go right. <laughs> Worry doesn't empty tomorrow of its troubles, but it empties today of its strength. If you think too much, you'll create a problem that was never there to start with. <laughs> I really like that. I think I'll say that again. If you think too much, you'll create a problem that was never there to start with. If you fill your head with worries, there won't be room for anything else. And I like this. When you worry, you use your imagination to create something that you don't want. Hmm. Okay. Reasons not to worry. <laughs> First of all, it's totally useless. Worrying about a problem never changes it. All it does is make you miserable while you wait. Worry is more exhausting than a full day's work. I mean, a full day is hard work. You can spend a whole day worrying and being stressed out over problems, trying to figure out what you should do, and especially if you add a lot of conversation to that, like talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. I mean, you can just be totally wiped out and exhausted at the end of a day, and all that time that you put in did no good at all. Worry is disease, D-I-S dash E-A-S-E, but it can create disease. <laughs> Same word, just without the hyphenation. <laughs> Worry steals our joy. Worry is the opposite of trusting God. Your time is too important to waste it worrying. And you may not like this one, Romans 14, 23, it's sin. Well, I, I, where does the Bible say that worry is sin? Well, it says that whatever is not of faith is sin. So unless you can tell me that you're worrying by faith, <laughs> then I think we might have to change our tune just a little bit. You know, I've thought and thought as a Bible teacher, because I know what, you know, I deal with, with making an attempt not to worry when I have problems. And so... I want to be sure that I tell people something that's going to work in their lives. So sometimes when you teach people, you say, don't worry, don't worry, you almost feel like <laughs> you're teaching them something useless. So I have looked for ways to tell people why they shouldn't worry. And I think one of the things that has really helped me, and I hope it helps you, is just just remember, it just doesn't fix anything. I mean, it just does not solve anything at all. And there really is a certain amount of pride involved in it because it really is us thinking that we can solve our own problems. Now, I'm not saying that you don't think about the things going on in your life. I believe that we need to ponder things before the Lord. There's a difference in pondering something before the Lord and actually worrying about it. Don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in him. Believe that when you pray, 
your answer is on the way. When I pray, my answer is on the way. And I love this scripture, Mark eleven twenty four. For this reason, I'm telling you, now listen to this, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that it is granted to you and you will get it. First you believe, then you receive. And I don't know. I mean, it would be nice if I only had to believe for five minutes and then I'd receive. Maybe I could handle that. But what if you have to be steadfast for five years or ten years? Boy, that's when it gets challenging. When you're believing God and you can clearly see the promise in the word, but it's just not happening for you yet. That's when we have to remember that the Bible says we inherit the promises of God by faith and patience. Not just faith. Now today we're offering you a free gift. I always say there's really no such thing as free. Because we're going to offer it to you free. But somebody paid for it. And so when you're offered something free. You need to not only get excited that you're getting something free. But you need to thank God for the people. Who paid the price for you to have. The help that you're about to get. So this is a little booklet we put together. It's actually not all that little. It's a pretty nice sized little booklet here. No time for worry. Now, frankly, we probably ought to run out of these, no matter how many thousands we've got, because I can't think of anybody watching today that wouldn't need this. <laughs> no time for worry. Offered to you as a free gift. Cast all your care on God, because he can do more for you than you can ever do for yourself 